Nevertheless, it's great to be here and thank you so very much for coming. When you look at it, achieve, achieving measurement-driven customer experience profitability with EXQ, why should it be measurement-driven? Remember Peter F. Trucker, you know the gentleman? He's considered the management guru of the management gurus. In 1997, if I'm not mistaken, they asked the management gurus, who will be your guru? And the number one was Peter F. Trucker. And one of his most famous quotes is, only what gets measured gets managed. And I couldn't agree with him more. Before I became an academic, I had a real job. So just like you, I was a senior marketing manager in financial services, private banking, wealth management, retail, and I saw in many conferences and master classes just like you. And I was listening to a lot of people who told me this measurement will be the silver bullet. It will solve everything. It will take away the pain. It will explain. It will drive profitability. I heard it all. But just as you, I applied it and it worked. Three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, hmm, a year or two later, my CEO says, what about this initiative with this measurement? And what did I reply? Yeah, it still works. It increases our brand perception walked away, and brand value, and said, wait a moment, Phil, please come back. How can we measure brand value, brand perception? Can you show me on the balance sheet where this is? And I said, uh, regrettably not, but there are great companies out there who believe it is there. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. <laughs> Most times I get away with it, even if I couldn't produce a single ROI. <coughs> but gladfully, these times are over. What drives their behavior, however, this is something you can look at. You need to learn how to understand them. What drives their behavior, not what drives their NPS score from 8 to 9. This is not how it works. Not what makes them today happy on a five, tomorrow on a four. No, you need to know what drives their behavior. Put their money where their mouth is. How do we do that? Focus on customer experiences. Looking at this, one thing that you expect from a presentation like this is of course we're talking big data. Big data is on everybody's mind. If we ask a CMOs, where shall we invest? Social media and big data. That's what the CMO says. Now I ask the CEO and he says social media, tools, toys, technologies. What does it do for the bottom line? Don't see anything. Big data, yeah, we have more data. We have data we can feed the, until the cows come home. Do we do something with it? Does it have an impact? No, why bother? Data is not big, data is not small, it's data. Today, we have the technology to get the answer for big questions. However, all you guys are, you're collecting data, but you cannot convert it in insights because you are not trained to ask the right questions. So you have a lot of trends, tendency, and all this future, what do they call it? Uh, futurologists? who will tell us, oh, this is where it's going to go. I'm like, yeah, let's take the, let's just rub the glass ball and see where it's going to happen. No, we have the data to prove it. So what data would that be that you know what people are going to do? And this is the reality. Nine out of ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, young lady. You're the lucky one. <laughs> Nine out of ten. Is that a, would you consider that a good correlation? Nine out of ten of your programs do not generate any profits at all. 
Why? Our question was in the research, how is that even possible? Why can that be? And we came up with three main reasons why they fail. And they are pretty easy to explain. It's about how you measure it. It's about how you practice centricity, not how you talk about centricity, but how you practice it, and looking at your touch points. And by touch points, I do not refer to touch point mapping, which is one of the silver bullets out there. We map them all, put them in little boxes, TQM thinking, didn't work in the 80s, now it works again, because we put CX in front of it, a little bit Six Sigma, lean management, and it's all going to work. No, it doesn't. Customer experience is complex, and it's good that it's complex. So you cannot condense it down to one little number. It's not going to happen. So you either men up or women up, sorry, and say, yeah, we do something about it. We not only accept it's more complex and more holistic, we embrace it. But what are you guys doing? Now let's take a proxy that helps. Let's take something here, there, that sounds good. And especially the, the only thing that you need to measure, hallelujah, every manager signs up for that. It's not going to work. Let's look at it point by point. Touch point mapping. You guys are great on outsourcing the customer experience. This in itself is one of the deadly sins of customer experience. You want to manage it? Oh yeah, if I manage it, let's outsource it. That's always a good idea. Give it to a company where they don't even know for whom they are working. From, from 0 to 700 in the morning, they work for them. From 700 to 1400 for them. What do you think their motivation is to do that for you? Cost thinking. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's outsource. Let's cost, you know. CEO will be happy. Profitability, mm, I reduce costs. In the long term, medium term, suffer. Customer churn goes up and everything that comes with it. Negative word of mouth, share of category goes down. But hey, sounded like a great idea while we were doing it. I remember when it started here in the UK, you guys all outsourced your call centers to India. Wow, what a smart move that was. I'm sure you were the hero in the board. Look how much money we saved. Until three years later, BBC and the entire press were over you. That customers were saying, I don't want to speak to an Indian who doesn't understand what I'm all about. And he has on the screen, my keyword doesn't fit in. No. Outsourcing the customer experience increases things. Yes, it has an influence. It has an influence on the probability of churn, meaning they go somewhere else, and negative word of mouth. Now give me a number. What do you think? One time? Two times? Come on, it's a safe environment. Come on. Ten. Ten. Fifteen. Ooh la la. Jesus Christ. You must have been talking to some customers. Five times. But think about it five times more likely that they go somewhere else and tell other people about it. You think that's a great cost-cutting opportunity there? I don't think so. Customer experience centricity, point number two. Your employees' skills and rewards, do they match customer experience centricity? I work a lot of with wealth managers and wealth management banking. These guys are great, you know, broker houses and so on. And I say, it's all about the customer experience. I said, okay, how do you pay your brokers? Sales, of course. Okay, sales of a particular stock or a particular fund? Yes, the more, the merrier. You see the slight contradiction here? It's not about your experience. It's you pushing stuff so they sell it. Yeah, but the sales people are really bad. I'm like, no, they follow your guidance. You give me a KPI, I follow. In the press, we often find this golden handshakes that everybody gets so upset about, that CEOs rank in a lot of money, despite the company is not doing very well. 
Well, first and foremost, I never hear these shareholders complaining when the stock goes up, when they do this cost-cutting exercises. No one is complaining there. All is good. And what do you give him? You give him a KPI, and the KPI is XYZ, therefore the company will suffer. No, but you gave me the KPI, and then it's the bad CEO. Doesn't really match, does it? Let me give you a, a, an example from a continental client, which had this marvelous idea that conversion of customers were the matrix, the behavior they want to drive, get them to us. And they just said, your KPI is to convert them. Great idea. And their conversion went through the roof. However, their profitability went down the drain. How? Well, how do you think they converted? Drop the pricing. Uh, you want me to convert them? I do everything to convert them. If it hurts the profitability, I don't care. You ask me to convert. Short-term thinking leads to medium and long-term losses. That's the correlation between short-term, medium, and long-term. Let's take just a look at this nice graph for a moment. Digest it. Because I believe uh, some of you in the room here might measuring the first two things. Let's look at the column that says word of mouth behavior. It's not intention, it's behavior. So we have here at first point a measurement that should give you a clear indicator if people would recommend or not. However, good old customer satisfaction is better at it, better at what it's, the other one is designed for. What does it say about that measurement? NPS has a function. Don't get me wrong. It creates awareness inside the organization that the customer is important. It's almost uh, if you come to a, to a doctor and say, I have a problem, I would say, good. Acknowledgement, you're there. And then I take NPS for it. Uh, probably not the right way, but it's a good start. Then, but the most interesting part is share of wallet. How much money do you spend with us versus my competitors? And I believe a score of one in academia, we consider that statistically irrelevant. If you miss 99% of the explanations why people do or do not give you your money, I think you're doing something wrong. And not only that, let's say you got this measurement, you invested a lot of money in it, so you have to go for it. So you measure it until there's no tomorrow, and you celebrate, hey, we went from here to there, yeah. And your CEO says, oh, how did it change the profitability? I don't have a clue. But it sounds good, you know. It sounds logical. If you like us, you give us a 9 on a 10. Of course, you give us more money. Please don't let him ask a question. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work. And if you focus on this measurement to find out what your business is going to do, then you're going to call Christopher and... Like often the clients call myself and say, we don't get it. We don't know what's going on. Sales goes up, revenues goes up, customer satisfaction is high, NPS goes up, and still profitability goes down, share of category goes down, and the churn, people go everywhere. How is that possible? I'm like, yes, it's very easy. We do a piece of research for the last 12 years on it. You're looking at the wrong things. You're focusing on something that is not reflecting what you want to do. If you focus on 1% of what explains your actions, young lady, and I just do this 1% and I do everything for it, and you do something else, how high are the chances that you actually do something else? 99? But I cannot explain it. I know what you're doing, how you're doing it, when you're doing it. But I have no idea why you're doing it. So why do we focus on that stuff? Because it's easy, 
Let's look at what EXQ does. EXQ delivers a different kind of insight. And this is why I became an academic. And this is why I preach it out there. Because I want everybody to take it. Because customer experience is a little bit more. Don't think about your job. Do you rather have a good experience or a bad experience as a customer? I believe we can all agree a good experience. So if you deliver good experience by knowing what they're doing, you think you're going to have happier employees, happier customers, therefore happier shareholders and happier CEOs? Yes! Who has on their business model written, we want to deliver bad experiences? And what are you focusing on? You want to delight your customers. Let me get a reality check here. You don't want to delight. Just start with not upsetting me. And you would do a good job. So in order to summarize it, how in God's name you can become a vanguard. Focus solely on your customers. It's a journey. Rome wasn't built in a day. And believe me, I live in Italy. So I can comment on this. But you already did the right thing. You are here today. And you're paying attention to what we are presenting. Therefore, I thank you. And I wish you all a nice afternoon. <laughs>